Good day, my dear YouTube friends. Yeah, you haven't seen any updates from me the last uh, two weeks, and that's because I spent uh, 10 days in a Vipassana uh, meditation course. Just two and a half hours from here. I, uh, I try to take time every, every year, take, so, uh, take some time to work uh, or maintain uh, my uh, physical and or mental health. And uh, this uh, Vipassana course was, uh, was on my uh, to-do list, my wish list for a while, and I'm very happy that I did it. Really good, really, really good. And to my surprise, what happened when I came home yesterday, I found a little package waiting for me. <laughs> With a little note on it, Marius, Marius and Nadia from Louise and Patrick. YouTube viewers. Uh, Louise and Patrick uh, are YouTube viewers. They've donated coffees before and uh, they live in the area. Uh, they have a cottage uh, not far from here and uh, they decided to stop by and uh, bring me a little gift that they dropped off. Well, they, they had to drop it off because I wasn't here. Let's just see what's inside. And they packed it up well, that's good because it's been raining. <laughs> Coffee. Nadia and Marius, so sorry to have missed you. Thank you for the YouTube videos from sometime neighbor. Patrick and Louise. We are currently restoring a house near to the, my, the mountain, approximately 20 kilometers the other side of Vichy. But we are returning to the UK tomorrow. We will be back in July and would love for you and Nadia to visit. It's approximately a 40 minute drive. Ah, cool. Please feel free to call us on da 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 or email best wishes Patrick and Louise. Wow, that, that's so cool. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, wow. Hey, if you also want to help me with my videos, and uh, you can donate me a coffee, and you can donate it uh, via uh, buymeacoffee.com, link below, or the link in the description, and your help is very much appreciated. I don't tend to make money from these videos, but to offset the costs, that would be uh, really helpful. But you could also just come by and, and drop some coffee off or, uh, yeah, or something else, a bottle of wine. Uh, Patrick and Louise, thank you, thank you very much. That's really cool. We're gonna meet up. In a sleepy French town, there lived a gentle soul whose heart was filled with dreams that made him whole. With calloused hands and determination so pure, he embarked on a mission, a venture to endure. An old house stood before him, worn and weathered, its beauty obscured, like a forgotten treasure feathered. With a vision in his mind, he set out to restore each broken beam and cracked window he would adore. But resources were scarce, funds as thin as air. He needed support, a helping hand to bear. So with a twinkle in his eye and a smile so bright, he devised a plan to ignite the town's delight. He vlogged on YouTube, his voice ringing clear, sharing his story, the dreams he held dear. Good people of the world, lend me your ears. I seek your kindness, your love and your cheers. For the house I rebuild in more than just stone. It's a symbol of hope, a place to call home. And as I toil and sweat amid dust and debris, I humbly request a small gift from thee. If you donate a coffee, a cup warm and true, bring it to me and my gratitude will ensue. With each duration of coffee, I shall persist, building brick by brick with love as my wrist. And then when this house shines, 
reborn from its blight. We'll share a cup together under the moon's soft light. The subscribers listened, their heart touched deep. Moved by his passion, their souls began to seep. Soon cups of coffee flowed and a river of support. From young and old, their kindness did exhort. And so Marius continued, his spirit alight, as coffee donations poured like stars in the night. With every sip, he felt the love and care infused in the walls, making memories to share. Years passed by, and the house stood tall and grand, a testament to unity, an extraordinary band. And on warm summer nights, the aroma would rise as laughter and coffee waffled under stormy skies. For the man, now a hero, with his house aglow, grateful for each cup of coffee that helped him grow, he'd gaze upon his creation a testament to grace and remember the generosity warming his embrace. So let this tale remind us in life's humble plea that with a simple act we can help others be. That even a cup of coffee offered with care can rebuild dreams and create a love affair. Mm. Bloody ants all over the place. Ugh. Okay, what I want to do this week is um, garden, obviously. I got to make the remaining steps. That's going to be probably three, three more steps. Possibly four, but I think three. I got to level the top, the top layer of uh, the terrace. What I did is I put some uh, root cloth on, uh, on the soil before I left, um, so that uh, the, uh, the weeds that are growing there will die or uh, definitely not develop more roots, which will make it harder for me to shovel and rake everything in the new place. Uh, yeah, level that. And then, uh, and then that can, yeah, I could start with, uh, with gravel. Yeah, adding gravel on there, I have to order gravel, but first I wanna have it all uh, in place. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to finish off this uh, lower situated terrace here behind me. I'm going to level it out, uh, put root cloth on it, and then uh, put that, uh, what do you call it, that mulch on it. You buy these bags of mulch, put mulch on it, and that will prevent roots from, or weeds from shooting through. And then with every uh, plant we, we, we plant there, we just cut a little opening in the root cloth and, and put it in. I think that will be most most uh, maintenance friendly. The thing is, I do like gardening, but once the garden is done, you have to start maintaining it, right? And I'm not in a maintenance mode. I'm in a building mode. Um, I don't want to spend time now on maintaining things. I, I, I want to build things. So, uh, yeah, that root cloth uh, needs to go there. And then actually I need to do quite a bit of gardening because it's just it's just growing real fast. But uh, Nadia told me don't do anything because she knows that plants and I don't go together well. I, I, I don't get plants. I, 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 I get steel, I get wood, I get stone, I get fiberglass. It, that's all straightforward. Um, but plants, they, they grow in all kinds of different directions and it's just weird stuff. Don't get it. Especially not plants that you can't eat. <laughs> What's the purpose of having plants that you can't even eat? Anyway, um, yeah, so that's Nadia's department and hopefully Nadia will be back in three to four weeks and she'll be here for a month. Yeah, that would be nice. Especially the front of the house that really needs trimming. Those roses are growing like um, cabbage. 
Um, right, okay, so I got, oh yeah, and what I also really want to do um, this week is uh, render that house, the little house, all the sides, uh, render it with the lime uh, rendering, and uh, yeah, that, that should be enough for this week. Just leveling out this terrace here, that's just going to be a lot of work. But anyway, it's got to be done, uh, and we will make a start. Oh, I got to start with carpentry here first, right? I just forgot about that, but I need to install these planks on the side there. Right, okay. Okay, let's start setting up, let's get to work. Um, I received another email, uh, an email from a company that uh, makes uh, shoes. If I wanted to have a pair of shoes uh, and, uh, and review them for them. Shoes, like running shoes, sneakers. No, I'm not interested in that. I don't mind having a free pair of shoes, but I'm not... <sighs> What's the point? That's not what this channel is about. And, and I need stuff that um, is useful, like goggles that don't fog up all the time. Goggles that, for example, feel sturdy and you put in a nice case that comes with them. Uh, goggles that you put on in the morning and you take off at night that don't fog up, that protect, that are scratch resistant. Um, goggles like that, that's what I need. I need uh, Makita tools, any tool basically. I'm happy to uh, receive that for free and uh, give you an honest review, provided that I can give you an honest review. Otherwise, I'm not interested. So people, companies, Chinese companies, stop emailing, you know. I'm not gonna review anything that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm doing this for fun, you know. Anyway, oh Makita, if you're watching, we should hang out together, become buddies, best buddies. Makita, I feel that until now this has been a bit of a one-way street. All the love coming from my side to you. So, uh, just saying. got a rough patch on the tip of my nose. And it's been there for, for weeks now. I have tried everything, putting on the moisturizer, Vaseline, KY okay, jelly, but uh, it's still rough. It's been there for weeks. So, as I've been working um, the last 20 odd years in very hot, warm, sunny, tropical climates, you know, I uh, in the sun outside. So you gotta gotta be careful, right? So Nadia said, uh, "Well, you know." check it out go to the uh, to the doctor which I probably have to do now the thing is that when you live in France and you pay tax here you get a carte vitale which is basically a pass to make use of all the medical facilities dentist doctor and it doesn't cost you a thing as far as I know but I don't pay tax in France Nadia doesn't pay tax in France. She works offshore. 
she pays tax in another jurisdiction and I don't have an income here. So I don't have a carte vitale. So I'm not insured. So if I go to the doctor here, I'd have to pay in cash uh, a 30 euro per consult. That's not too much, you know, don't worry about that. But imagine this is something more serious. Then it would need further treatment. I would have to go to hospital and, you know, then the whole circus starts, basically. Now, I'd have to pay for that. These prices are not not huge, they're nominal fees. You know, it could end up a lot if this needs consultation and a biopsy and, and, and you know. Now, I am insured in Holland, but then I would have to go to Holland and make an appointment with the doctor, with the GP is not a big problem, but then I would have to wait weeks before I get an appointment in a hospital and weeks for uh, another appointment and the whole thing could take a lot of time. Now, driving up and down to Holland every few weeks, that's not really an option. Um, so staying in Holland, well, what am I going to do there? I have nothing there apart from friends and family, but you know, they, I'm sure they like to see me, but not days on end. So that's a bit of a dilemma. What I could do is get a job for say a day, a week or a day, a month, I don't know. And, and pay tax. And then with having a fiscal number here, paying tax here, I can use the facilities, the medical facilities. I can open a bank account because that's been a real problem here. Just can't get a bank account in France because the first thing they ask is your fiscal number. Don't have a fiscal number, so no bank account. Yeah, it would potentially solve a lot of problems if I would uh, just get some, some kind of... Uh, income just in order to get a tax number um, so that I can make use of these facilities. That's, that's really something to consider. So the steps are 98% uh, finished. I just need to do uh, some of the edges, tidy them a bit up, trim them. Um, just want to have them a little bit raised on the edge so that standing rainwater cannot, uh, is not standing against the wood. And uh, yeah, I do a little bit more wire brushing. If you uh, look at the upper step, one that I made yesterday is, uh, is more yellow than the rest. Yeah, and uh, that must, yeah, I, I, I'm inclined to think that that is uh, because I used a different sand. Because I switched suppliers and I had to switch suppliers because my main suppliers Ah, they were closed for two days and probably still today because they were suffering from a cyber attack. <laughs> the whole shop closed. Ah, so I had to go to a different supplier. I did not realize that sand could make such a big difference. I'm pretty sure it's the sand because um, 
Yeah, it must be, because that's the only thing that I've changed. Oh, that's something to really look out for when I start uh, rendering, lime rendering the little house, the exterior, because I don't want two colors mixing up in that. That, that, would, be, that would be bad. You know, for here, for here I don't really mind. This, this, this stairs, this, you know, it, 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 it should become weathered and, and I want mosses to grow and I want it to become dirty and I want it to look like, like this has been here since, you know, the, 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 the 1700s or maybe even earlier. I want people who come here to feel that this is genuine, old, French. Yeah, they, they will probably look at the stairs and think, hey, why is that upper step a little bit more yellow? And then, uh, you know, who, who knows? Maybe in the era when they, when they built the stairs, they, they, they had uh, quality problems or, you know, or the main mason was sick that day. You know, uh, or maybe they had a cyber attack. Who knows? You don't know. It's so long, so long ago. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, Nadia, she's the artist. She, she, she really, she thinks from her gut, and I'm in my head. I'm, I'm, I'm the engineer, and I want to make build things right. And and this is wrong. This is really, really wrong. If you were a contractor and you would be working for a client and you come up <laughs> with a different different color scheme in one flight of stairs, you can't get away with that. You can take it down and sort it out, you know, but, and that's how I think, because everything, I want everything to be good and perfect and to professional standards, but that, that it, it, I shouldn't be thinking like that, you know, um, because this is, th this adds character to the whole thing. And if it was all perfectly straight and, and you know, almost like a concrete prefab house, that's not what we want to go for. Then, then we, we are not achieving our, our goal. And, and that's, that's sometimes quite of a, yeah, a, a mind game, you know. Uh, you got to take a step back, I really feel, and, and look at it from a different perspective in order to judge you know the quality of your work it it it's just adding character and and story and you know when people ask me what happened well a cyber attack on the local brico <laughs> yeah that's the story uh, but i don't want to make that one uh, on the little house because then you got to call us no, that, uh, that would not be good. Right, so what else are we going to do? Um, I'm going to hold off rendering the house. Now I got to do I got to do that primer coat first. A little bit left. And then, uh, oh, I got I, I really got to trim those, uh, those hedges here and all the vegetation. Well, I, yeah, there's not much reason not to start with leveling the soil up there it's going to be a back-breaking job but you know it needs to be done because then the gravel i can order gravel that can go on top and then once we have the gravel i can start partially demolishing that little outbuilding and with the proceeds of that outbuilding the leftovers the, the stones and all that come off I'm going to build a little retaining wall around the fire pit. But we'll talk about that later. That's not that's definitely not for this week. Okay, let's uh, crank on.
wasted uh, wasted a good part this morning emailing with uh, yet another company who wants to sell me something not sell me something give me something they uh, they wanted to send me um, it's a device like a sani broyeur it's a toilet macerator so uh, the discharge of the toilet ends up in this tank and this tank macerates it grinds it and uh, pumps it through a narrow small diameter uh, discharge line hose made me think you know that that would be actually a very useful thing for me because uh, that would greatly simplify um, my sewage piping for later in the bathroom because in that same in that same reservoir I could uh, I could discharge the sink in the bathroom the toilet and the laundry machine and the kitchen and then send it all through one small diameter hose into the cellar the basement into the uh, the main uh, sewage pipe would make a good thing but what they basically wanted was uh, and this took about seven emails. Uh, they wanted to send me a unit. The unit would, uh, was advertised on their website for 140 euros. And uh, I said, that's fine. Yeah, I can, I can use it. Um, I'm happy to receive it and to install it. And uh, it will feature in one of my vlogs, of course. Provided that I can give my honest opinion about, about the thing. And uh, I, I only give honest opinions. Oh yeah, uh, they were not. They uh, they were hoping for a, a good review. That's what they said. What they really meant was, uh, if you don't give a good review, then uh, there's no use for it, for us to doing this. And uh, I said it will feature in in several videos probably. You know, when I receive the thing, when I talk about it, read the manual install it and use it yeah no they wanted um, the product to appear in the first five minutes of a video because that's you get the the the, high, the highest numbers of what of viewers the f first five minutes the first ten minutes uh, so they wanted to be featured in the first five minutes of the video and it had to be a positive review yeah right for 140 euros anyway Oh yeah, and they also wanted to uh, to send me a code that I could put in the description of the vlog, and then uh, you could order one, and I would get a commission on it. Yeah, it's uh, that's just a waste, you know. I'm I'm gonna sell my soul for 140 euros. Think about the time it takes to to make five minutes of content, interesting content. Anyway, that's how social media has influenced the way the world of advertising, I guess. It's interesting, and I'm, I'm definitely open for partnerships, but they would have to be relevant and, uh, and reasonable. I'm just not going to sell my soul for uh, 140 euros, 150 maybe, but definitely not 140. <laughs> In a world of bumps and mounts, a task I found To shovel dirt and flatten the ground With sturdy hands and a determined will I embark on a mission, a valley to fill The earth beneath, so uneven and rough Yearns for my touch to make it enough With each heave and shovel's embrace I carve a path to transform this space The rhythm of toil, the melody of sweat I dig deep and hope not to forget 
that beneath this blanket of dirt and grime lies the promise of beauty one day to shine. With each clump of soil that leaves my sight, I paint a canvas of hope both day and night. For the bumpy terrain shall yield to my might as I sculpt a foundation that's solid and right. The sun beats down, casting shadows long, but my spirit persists, unwavering and strong. For in the challenge lies true satisfaction to reshape the land with my own hand's action. With patience and purpose, the ground does yield to the steady rhythm of my efforts wield. And as the dirt settles, no longer askew, a smoother expanse emerges, vibrant and new. Oh, the joy that swell as I graze upon, the transformation achieved, my victory won. The bumpy ground now stands proud and flat, a testament to my labor and unwavering spat. So let this tale of shovels and earth inspire your soul, encourage your worth. For in the act of shaping, we find our might to flatten the bumps and bring forth the light. Thanks guys for watching this far. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Um, if you would like to support me, um, you could buy me a coffee via the link below. And then uh, if I have enough coffees, I can maybe uh, skip the coffees, but get myself a new one. That would be really useful. Thanks. Thanks for that. So, uh, Big Mud has just delivered. I, uh, I had to get cash and I had to uh, go to the shop with old invoices because the computers are still down now for the fifth day. It seems that they have uh, stricken, stroke, striked. Uh, and uh, a bunch of, of outlets from uh, Big Mat in this region, pirates, cyber pirates they call it. So I had to dig up some old invoices so that they knew the price that I was paying for the material. I went there this morning, got a lot of cash out of the bank and uh, they delivered today. Yeah, they could deliver immediately of course uh, because uh, there's not too many too many customers at the moment with these uh, problems. but. Uh, Bloody hell, I got some uh, some stuff to move, that's for sure. So this here is a lot of sand from the local Brico shop, Brico Marche, and it's a very yellow sand. Now this is the sand that I've been using before for the little house, for the rendering. So I made sure that I ordered enough. I ordered, uh, what, 20 more bags of that stuff, because I gotta have, gotta have the right color. Uh, and then here we've got, uh, some grey cement and some white cement. The white cement uh, um, is going to be used, well, and the grey cement as well for the uh, for the wall. Uh, the wall that's going to be sitting, you know, in that uh, half round shape there in the back of, of the fire pit, where the fire pit is going to be. I'm going to build the, the wall in exactly the same style as I did with the stairs, you know, pretending it to be all old fashioned stone now here's my gravel for the for the top layer i've got uh, two bags of the same the same great gravel as i had before and i figured you know let's just uh, mix uh, one bag of a finer gravel through because i believe it will stabilize the big uh, gravel pebbles more uh, meaning that uh, when you walk on them you have less of a sinking feeling i think that the small the small pebbles will uh, lock the bigger ones a bit in place and it gives a bit more of a firm experience under the feet. Oh my god, you, you, you never have enough space, do you? You never have enough space. Well, I better start moving.
the zongus of zimble and twirly wigs rain, through the quibbles and bumbles, an enigma unfamed. A jumble of words and a cosmic dance, an absurdity's embrace, a perplexing trance. When rhombus is oval and squares are skewed, the moon is a pancake, the stars wear no hue. A pickle conducts a sympathy grant, while toasters recite poetry on demand. The spoodle worm skips a polka dot tango, with kazumbas and fribbles they form a flamingo. Dabbled with gibberish, gibberish too, no meaning, no sense, just nonsense that grew. The gibbering widgets hoot and they holler in a gibberish jargon that baffles the scholar. The puzzle's unsolvable, the riddle unsaid in a language so cryptic it's lost in the thread. It's a quizzical labyrinth of whimsy and glee where the dillywicks tangle with ghibli G. No compass to guide, no logic to hold, just a bewildering tapestry that cannot be told. So embrace the bewilderment, let go of the guest. No understanding awaits in this whimsical fest. For in the absurdity, joy finds its place. In a world of nonsensical words, it's grace. I don't know what it means too. Just got it from ChatGPT. It's really starting to look like something now, huh? You can see uh, the levels and uh, I think the levels are really, really, really cool. What we're gonna do later is uh, we're gonna chop off the, say the first floor of uh, what's going to be the bathroom. So this is going to be a flat roof. Then there's going to be in the main wall of the building is going to be uh, big opening doors which lead into the bedroom. So from the bedroom you can come out onto the flat roof. And then there in this corner here, there will be uh, a little staircase going down to this walkway onto this level. Yeah. Uh, nice uh, wrought iron uh, gates around it or fencing around it <clears throat> and then here this door here is going to be closed off and then here there will be uh, also two wide opening doors which lead into the into the living room the main living room or the kitchen living room whatever it's gonna be <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, there's just lots going on. Yeah, I, 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 I like the levels. It's, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. It, it makes the whole plot so much more interesting. Yeah, it's still a lot of work, but, but you know, we're making progress. And that's what's most important at the moment. Hey, I wish to thank you uh, for watching, <clears throat> watching all the way to the end. Uh, thank you very much for liking. Thank you very much for subscribing. If you leave a comment in uh, 99%, I will, uh, I will reply to that. <coughs> and then, uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. What are we going to do next week? Finish off the gravel. Uh, hopefully start rendering the little house with the lime rendering, the exterior rendering. That's just a primer coat that's on there now. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, that's going to take up most of the week, I think. Uh, oh yeah, I'm going to put some uh, stuff on the lower level, maybe plant some plants. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You know, we'll see. We'll, we'll do what we can do. Thank you very much and see you next week. That's it for me.